What's up guys, if you're an offshore fisherman, I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect survival dish bag. Here in Central Florida, you never know what kind of storm you're gonna get caught in, so it's best to always be prepared when heading offshore. All right, before we get started guys, if you aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now personally, I have kids, I have a family, um, I owe it to them to make sure that I'm prepared well when I go offshore. A couple years ago, uh, two firefighters got lost at sea out of my home port. Shows the last time Jacksonville firefighter Brian McClooney and his friend Justin Walker, a fellow firefighter from Virginia, were ever seen. And that really hit home for me because uh, one of the guys was an Iraq veteran, Purple Heart recipient. They were real good dudes and it's just super sad to see them get lost at sea like that. I just don't want to see that happen to anybody again, so hopefully you guys get something out of this. Alright guys, so anytime I go offshore, I always bring my ditch bag. This is my ditch bag. Whether I'm going on my boat or I'm going on my buddy's boat, I'm always bringing this thing. It has everything I need personally to survive for a month at sea if I need. Alright, so before I get started, everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video is going to be linked in the description below. So if you guys want to purchase all this stuff, you can get it all on Amazon. You can get this exact bag if you want. As far as ditch bags go, ACR makes a good one. It comes with your EPIRB and it comes with the strobe and the ditch bag for about 335 bucks. So check that one out. And hey, if you guys are getting any value out of this video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And like I said before, this is how I made my bag. I'm not saying it's the perfect bag, but this is how I did it. So just to give you an idea and give you a, a decent example. Everybody's bag is gonna be a little bit different depending on your needs. Uh, just know your limits, know your physical limits, and always think about worst case scenario. What are you gonna need? What are you gonna want? All right, so let's dig right into it. This is my survival ditch bag. This is a waterproof, uh, submersible, floating, orange bag. And it also comes with uh, backpack straps which is nice because then you can put it on and actually use it as a flotation device or you can just throw it over your shoulder. It's got a nice handle on it and then it's also got a um, buckle here so you can roll it down and actually that's what makes it waterproof. Let me show you that real quick. But all you're gonna do to close this thing is you just pinch it together. You're gonna fold it down. You're gonna give it like three or four folds and then once you have it folded, you're gonna buckle it up. And that's gonna make it 100% waterproof right there. That seal right there is not getting any water in it. Some things to mention about this bag. Uh, it's orange, a good uh, signaling device when you're out there floating in the ocean. It's also easy to find on the boat. And make sure it's only as big as you need it. You don't want an excessively large bag. Just make sure that it's big enough to hold what you need. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, well, let me show you what I got inside. All right, first and foremost, I have a first aid kit. Uh, first aid kit is Always, I always have multiple on my boat. I have one up top in my boat. I have one in my ditch bag. Um, and I usually keep one in my truck too. All right, a good first aid kit is always gonna have a tourniquet, okay? Um, this one here has a nice little tourniquet. I always recommend carrying uh, at least two tourniquets, um, but this right here has one. I also have another one in my boat. Um, and let's open it up and see what it has. So just some things you're gonna want in your first aid kit are maybe a heat blanket, you're gonna want Motrin, uh, you're definitely gonna want gauze, and that's it. Just make sure you can stop bleeding, protect wounds, and clean out wounds. Not that complicated. You can get a good first aid kit on Amazon for about 40 bucks. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for a decent one that I recommend. This is just part of my med kit. I have some extra gauze in here. I have Pedialyte, I have sanitizer. I even have some old antibiotics that I didn't use from when I got sick one time, so. Not a bad idea to have some antibiotics on you because if you do get an infection out there, you're definitely not gonna survive. To me, the next most important thing, probably the most important thing in my bag is my EPIRB, okay? This is made by ACR. Uh, this is a personal locator beacon, all right? So I carry this in my pocket when I'm offshore and I don't ever let it leave my pocket or in my sight. I always keep it on me. And what this thing is, is if you were to go overboard and your boat sinks and you're all by yourself or you just have no way of communicating with anybody on land, you flip this antenna up, you hold this power button down for however many seconds it says, and it's gonna start emitting a emergency distress beacon and that's gonna signal to the Coast Guard. So the Coast Guard's gonna see this and see that somebody's in distress and they're gonna come rescue you and it'll take them right to you because it's GPS. 
I never leave offshore without it. Um, they also sell ones that mount inside of your boat as well. So if you can afford it, get a couple. Worst case scenario, get a personal one. It's about 360 bucks on Amazon. All right, next thing I got is um, very important. It's a, I got a Cobra VHF radio. This right here is gonna allow you to communicate with other boats out on the ocean. It's gonna allow you to communicate with the Coast Guard. And if you are close enough to land, it'll let you communicate with uh, land-based towers. Now, these things are really a line of sight item. So they're only gonna go about as far as the antenna uh, can see, line of sight. If you're 30 miles offshore, you're not gonna be able to reach land with this, but it is a nice tool to have. Uh, just make sure when you get one of these, make sure you get one that floats and make sure that it's waterproof and submersible. Uh, but this one here was about 116 bucks on Amazon, so good deal. All right, so next up I have a survival tarp. It's a orange survival tarp. So this thing is gonna be nice because you can drag it behind you while you're floating and it'll signal uh, airplanes and everything like that. It'll catch their attention, keeping the sun off you, catching rainwater. Definitely need to have some sort of cover system like this and bright and orange is probably the best way to go so that way you can, you can be seen easier. Uh, this one here was about 17 bucks on Amazon. All right, so my next item I'm gonna pull out is a survival raft, okay? Um, there are some really expensive ones out there. I ended up going with the cheap one because that's all I can afford right now. Um, but worst case scenario, it's gonna work. It's gonna get me out of the water for probably a couple days um, and it'll give me a better chance of surviving because if you're an offshore fisherman, you know how big them hammerheads and those bull sharks get out there. And as soon as you jump in the water, a lot of times you're, there's a bull shark there. So um, if I'm injured and bleeding or anything like that, I don't really wanna be in that water. I'd prefer to be up on a raft, even if it's dinky. <laughs> All right, so this one was only 20 bucks on Amazon, believe it or not. Um, it is a inflatable orange survival raft, okay? It's not necessarily built for survival, but it'll work, okay? My kids um, have been using the same exact one in our pool for two years now, and they have yet to pop it. And they're just, they're jumping on it like crazy, they're wrestling, so, Honestly, that thing is actually pretty durable for being a cheap raft from China. So, yeah, it also comes with paddles, and then it even comes with a little uh, personal air pump. It's gonna take you about 30 minutes to pump it up by hand, but hey, um, it's better than nothing, okay? All right, this little guy here is a personal strobe beacon. This one here is made by ACR. I think it's about 18 bucks on Amazon. Um, it's gonna flash like this, and I think it lasts about five or seven days continuous. So if you only use this at nighttime or when it's low light, uh, it's gonna help people find you and recover you quicker. So definitely have something like this. Make sure it's waterproof. And hey, if you guys are getting any value out of this video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. All right guys, next and one of the most important things is food and water, okay? You can't survive out there for three weeks without food and water. So once you have all the essentials packed into your bag, then you're gonna fill it up with um, some meal bars and as much water as you can. I, I'm, I'm gonna go with a couple of camelback bladders and bottled water, okay? I wanna bring some bottles because if it starts to rain, I wanna be able to collect that rainwater back up into those. Uh, for my meal bars, I use Pro Bar. It's about $22 for a 12 pack on, on Amazon. Um, they're really, really good. They last a pretty good while. Um, so right now I'm out of my meal bars. I just ended up actually uh, getting rid of the old ones. I'm about to order some new ones today. Um, but you wanna try to replace those every six months to a year, maybe every season, just get a whole new assortment of them. All right, moving on to small stuff that you may forget. Extra pair of sunglasses. Neck gaiters, can't have enough of these. Keep that sun off you. You're gonna need to keep that sun off you while you're out there. If you end up getting sunburned, that's just gonna take more um, water from your system. It's gonna make it harder to survive. Speaking of sun, Always bring some extra sunscreen, uh, SPF 50 or 30 a minimum. Um, just make sure you have plenty of sunscreen. Also make sure you have sunscreen for your lips. Uh, these are chapstick sunscreens, uh, definitely crucial. You don't want your lips getting fried while you're out there. Lighter, can't go wrong with this. Maybe try to get a uh, torch lighter, that way it's like waterproof and windproof. Toothbrush, just keep that uh, mouth clean, clean off tools, you never know. Just always good, always good to have a toothbrush no matter where you're at. All right, next up we have a whistle. Definitely need one of these. I mean, you're supposed to have them anyways when you go offshore, but I keep extra stuff in my bag. Uh, you maybe, maybe you also wanna keep a flare gun inside here just to help uh, give you additional signaling devices. 
All right, and then I have some batteries in here to replace the ones in my strobe. So um, your VHF radio, if that one takes batteries, make sure you have extra batteries for that too. And then a couple other things in here that I'm about to add that I'm missing currently. Uh, I'm gonna make a hand line fishing kit. So um, if I'm out there stranded and I got fish all around the, the boat because I'm the only structure they see, I'm gonna start trying to hand line in mahi or whatever I can so that I can get some fresh protein while I'm out there. And uh, don't forget, you're gonna want some pliers in that kit somewhere. All right guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any value out of it, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. All right, and I'll see you guys in the next video.